Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nice having you in class again today and then uh, we hope you've been doing very well. So today we are going to look at um, a few things on uh, Microsoft Excel. You know, um, this um, software um, has a wide range of applications and then you can do so many things on it or so many things uh, so today we are going to look at a part of it that then um, concerns surveyors or let's say that concerns us Yeah, because we are surveying solutions. So we are going to look at a part of it that concerns us You know, um, we major or let's say yeah, we major um, or we take them um, angular observations or we major angles on site most times and then maybe for academic purpose or maybe for your client or for whatever reason you know you, we have to maybe process the data we have acquired on site or maybe acquired from site and then we need to um, perform some how would i say trigonometric function or maybe maybe operations or maybe use some trigonometric functions rather and then maybe carry out some operations you know and over time, uh, let's say the first time I, I encountered Excel was, um, let's say, 2016. I mean, using it for um, angular observation. Yes, not like the first time I started using it. It was around 2016. And I didn't really know that um, if I type in a value or maybe if I type in a number on Excel, I can't use it directly as though it is an angular value or the value I typed in is in degree. You know, I'm trying to bring in these basics for us to understand what I'm trying to or what we are trying to tell you today. What we are trying to tell you today is that if, for instance, you have, um, let's say, you have some values there. We have 10, we have 20, we have 50, we have let's say 5, we have 120. Let's say these are angles you observed on site. And you want to get, would I say, the tan or the cos or the cosine or maybe any other hyperbolic or whatever the case is, function of these values. And you just come on Excel and okay, since there is 10 there, you click on the next cell, you say equal to sign my right, they say return the sign of an angle. You click on sign there, then you what you select this cell, say enter, it gives you a value. You will now assume that the value you have here is actually the value of sign 10. For the other values, you can just automatically do a drop down. The other values are out. So this will be the value of what sign 20, this is the value of what sign 50, this is the value of sign 85, and this is the value of sign 120. However, if you go back to your calculator, which I would um, crave your indulgence, just take your calculator and then that's a press or type sign 10 and see if the values correspond to the values you have on Excel here. Yeah. No, they don't correspond. That's for sign 10. For sign 10, you'll be having something like 0 0.174. Am I right? Good. Then for sign 20, you'll be having something like 0 0.342. Right? Good. Let's go to sign 120. For sign 120, you're having something like 0 0.866. So, which of them is correct? For now, the value you have on your calculator is correct because the value you are using on Excel, you've not put it in the right format where Excel can actually work with the trigonometric functions on those values. So that's what we are going to show to you today. So maybe when you go to site and then you acquire data, maybe angular observations, and then it's okay, ah, or we want to save time, you just come on Excel, maybe, maybe. Um, you use the data logger and then you export it that maybe Excel, CSV or any other file, even if it's TXT and you've maybe done your whatever and you have brought it to Excel. Ah, let me just use sign this, call this and you know, even in them traverse computation where you have that long, I say, 
that is a long game columns and then different rules whereby maybe you definitely have your stand whatever post whatever and then you go about your operations and you want to maybe design the little formula with it. just something to ease your work and you use the value directly you will be getting it wrong so the first thing you are going to do is that for you to be able to use any of those angular observations on excel you will have to convert it to, to radian you have to convert it to, to radian and then it's very easy to do that so if you come maybe you click on another cell first thing is always equal to then you say radian the type radian so you can see the description there convert degrees to radian so what excel does is that when it converts that your value, those are your values you observed as degrees to radian, and then you use those trigonometric functions, your results will be displayed as though they are in degrees when you use the trigonometric function as you got from your calculator. I hope you did not miss it. Good. So now let's the radians, right? You click on the radian and then you do what? You select the cell where your values are enter so this is the corresponding value for um 10 degrees in radian so you drag down there's actually a formula for it um 120 180 over pi or something i can't really recall i think um, pi over 180 or 180 over pi I can't really recall but i prefer using the command directly on them on excel so i don't make a mistake or you can confirm the value um, yourself. I think one is over five or five or one. So now, what we have now, these are the values we are going to apply. Those are what our trigonometric what um, that's the functions on. So what did we use? We use sine here, right? So we now come down to this place. We click on that cell. Say equal to what sine. So they said return sine of an angle. So you click on it. Then we are returning the sign of this angle now, no longer 10, right? Good. So you click on this cell and you say enter. So from here, you can just decide to do what? Drop down. We have this. What's this? Right? Trying to tell us here. Formula. That's not example now. So now these are actually the corresponding values we need. So you can go back to your calculator. You see, okay. The values here are not in three decimal places, so let's say, let's say we take it to three decimal places or so. Good. So let's take it to three decimal places now. So we have, um, okay, this is four, right? Let's take it to three. I'll prefer three because, um, good. So for sign 10, we have 0 0.174. You can confirm that on your calculator. For sign 20, we have what? 0 0.342. For sign 50, we have what? 0 0.766. For sign 85, we have what? 0 0.996. And then for sign 120, we have what? 0 0.86. So you can see now that if this is actually your angle, let's say the angular observation you on the side this cannot be the sign no this cannot be however this is the sign the sign of your what of your angle so let's the sign of what angle here yeah. are we together good all other um trick um this applies to all other trick identity or trick, trick function now let's try cos and see. Let's say um, cos of um, angle, right? Just for this video, cos of angle. So now we come down here again. We on that cell equal to cos, right? Good. So cos returns the cosine of an angle. Remember, we are not using this value. We are using this value here. So we can see do what. Okay, so you can confirm the values from your calculator. The first one is what cos 10 is 0 0.985. So let's try to okay, good 0 
the other one is in plus 20 which is 0 0.940 and let's go to the last one which is plus 120 which was minus 0 0.5 so the summary of everything we just told you today is that when you have any angular observation maybe on site maybe mathematics surveying anything maybe geodesy whatever it is and you want to work with them on excel you don't use them directly on excel as though you are using it on your conventional calculator so the first thing is that you convert them to radian on excel and then you use the trigonometric function or whatever the case is on them on excel again not just those values you acquired or those values you can easily type on your calculator so you can do that for tan and the cotangent the sine and then the rest of them and then uh, you will see that um, the values will correspond so thanks for coming to class i hope we've um, enlightened you or let's say maybe reminded you of something you know before we've provided solutions to uh, that particular solution problem so it's nice having you again in class if you are just coming for the first time uh, please subscribe to the channel share with your friends like and comment and then make sure you always check on us because uh, we will always give you the best and the best is always coming on. thanks for always being there for us and then uh, we'll see you again on the next video until then keep being a good dramatic engineer bye